Hi everybody, Emily Kidlet Book Love. I'm here to talk to you about the Penderwick series. I'm doing a full review on the first two books and the series in general of the Penderwick series by Jean Bert Saul. This is the first book, The Penderwicks, a summer tale of four sisters, two rabbits, and a very interesting boy. This is the second book, The Penderwicks of Gardam Street. This was 2005, the first book. I believe this one was 2008. So, um, the, let's talk a little, so there are four books total in the series. I have not read the second two. I will do a separate review once I read those. I just wanted to, and I have ordered them already on Amazon because I was halfway through reading the second one I ordered them. Let's talk about the first book. Now I have mixed reviews about this series, but stay with me so I can explain it well. So I'm a series author myself. I write crime drama, romantic suspense. I have two published novels and two more that I'm working on in a series. And um, I know that many people have told me they loved my second novel, and I write big 700 page novels, that they love my se second novel much more than the first. A lot of the characters are the same. It's book two in the series. So I didn't understand that until I read The Penderwicks. Um, I loved this second book much, 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 much more. I read this book in two days. I read The Penderwicks. The first one took me almost five days to read because I just only could read a little at a time. It didn't engage me as much. But then thinking on it, I think it's because as you read series books, by the second, third, fourth book, anytime after the first book, you know the characters better. You you've been evolving with them, you finally figured out who's who, you've, you've learned their personalities, like getting to know a real person. Much, so it's much more interesting. You know, when you first meet someone, it's not always as interesting until you know more about them. So this first book, the first chapter engaged me, the second, third chapter, but in the middle it lost me a little. I felt the plot was a little slow. You know, there were whole chapters on baking a cake or chasing a rabbit in a garden. A little more slow for me. Um, the last several chapters I loved, and then that's what made me buy and read the second book, which I really fell in love with the whole, the entire book. But so, and so the book is about, or the Penderwick series is about four sisters. Um, they are ages 12, 10, 12, 11, 10, and little Batty, who's about four or five in the first book. And their mother died from cancer after the, the littlest baby was born, the youngest sister, so they're being raised by their dad. And, um... So the whole series is sort of about these four sisters who have no mom, who sort of have these kind of comical antics, you know, normal, sisterly things like doing things without the dad finding out and having each other's backs and a lot of growing pains and coming of age type tales and um, lovable characters really once you really get to know them. Now in the first book I was lost because there are four sisters and you know, and all the first chapters had every sister almost in all the scenes, as I recall. Um, you know, so you have four girls talking back and forth and back and forth in one whole chapter. So you can't really visualize them yet. You don't know them well enough yet to really have a picture of who's who and who's talking. So it kind of lost me a little. It helps that the author eventually gave unique descriptions to them that stuck out. Like um, one, of the, all of them have brown curly hair and brown eyes, except for Sky and the end. Every time one of the girls would, would meet someone in the book and, and Sky would be introduced, they'd say, blue sky, blue eyes. That's how I remembered Sky. And then they talk about how she had blonde hair and blue eyes like her mom and the rest all had dark hair. So it was easy to remember Sky. It was eventually easy to remember little Batty because Batty, you know, baby Batty, she was the little sister, the baby, four years old with wearing fairy wings. So that helped it stick out. And eventually you, you catch on that Rosalind, the oldest sister, is the responsible one who's kind of boy crazy and first coming into the getting absorbed with boys thing. And then Jane was harder to remember, you know, playing Jane, I kind of, kind of thought of it as. The only interesting, about, interesting thing about her that I caught eventually was that she is a writer and she wants to be an author someday and she writes all these cool stories about Sabrina Starr, her heroine. So that stuck out. So eventually, once you really get to know the characters, then you get into the story. It just took a while. I thought the plot was a little slower for some of this here for me, for an adult reader of children's literature, and I often don't feel that way about any children's books. But I have to be fair and say I fell in love with the second book. I instantly went and bought the third and fourth books, which I haven't read yet, but I'll review that soon. The second book, The Penderwicks on Garden Street, is so adorable. It reminded me a lot of The Parent Trap, um, the sisters 
well, the, their dad, the dad's sister, who's his, apparently his only remaining relative, decides it's time for the dad to get a new wife or to date because he's been alone raising all these girls since, for five, six years since Batty was born, the little sister. And so the dad, of course, doesn't want to date. He doesn't like the idea, but he does it just to shut up his sister, basically. But then the girls, of course, so this book is all about the girls sort of coming to terms with their dad dating and maybe getting a new stepmom and typical what can we do to sabotage it? You know, so they, they enact the save the daddy plan, which is to set him up with dates that they know will go so bad that he'll hate that he'll never want to date again and will be turned off from the idea. So it's really super cute. <clears throat> but then toward the end, they feel bad for him and they really do want him to be happy. And they, they change their plan to actually find him a good person. And, um, which turns out to be the next door. Well, I'm not gonna tell you. So, uh, but really, um, it's super cute and it's kind of comical and there's a lot of growing pains in here too, but the characters are more developed. You get to know them more. I felt there's a lot more plot in this book. The chapters hooked me right in the first three chapters. I couldn't stop reading. It uh, had almost seemed more adult-like, more action happening, more chapters on full scene, scenes of action, not just a whole chapter on something simple like a cake baking, you know, so it really intrigued me a lot more. Super cute, very parent trap-like. Um, made me laugh out loud quite a few times and I, I couldn't stop reading it at all. Um, you know, I can only read a certain amount each day, but I definitely read this in two days. In fact, I read the whole second half just this morning. I just finished it when, with my coffee over like an hour and a half period. I just read the whole book straight through the second half. So I would say, and these are big, this is a big book and it's not illustrated, so it's a big, you know, it's a novel. The only illustrations are at the beginning of the chapter, which is just this same image they have on the front. So it's definitely full novel reading, um, fat book. This second one has, uh, what, 300 pages. Um, this one's a little bit smaller, same thing, novel. So a little bit smaller, though, and this first one only has... Uh, about 250 so I would say definitely great adult reading adolescent older adolescent teenage if you have a genius 10 year old reader that really gets into longer novels without any illustrations I think they would do okay I thought it was wonderful for a young adult read or an adult read I mean I loved it I'm looking forward to reading the second book the third and fourth book the Pender X at point Moet and the Penderwicks in Spring. And this one, by the way, the very first book, they're on vacation for a summer at this wonderful, charming sort of gardens, grounds, cottage they rent called Arendelle. And it's all about all their adventures there. And then the second one, they're back home in regular daily life with the Save the Daddy plan. So great book. And I love the father-daughter aspect. I'm kind of a sucker for father-daughter stories. So I love the single father thing. I love the doting father thing. Really sweet. I wish Mr. Penderick had a little more of a role. Um, most of the focus is on the girls, so he was a real, he was definitely an interesting guy. Um, there's a lot of sort of theme to Little Women. So if you love Little Women with the Forced March sisters and sort of their antics and growing pains and their fights and then their partnerships and they're saving each other and all those things, you would really like this. It would be like Little Women you know, t pulled out of the 21st century, really in modern times. Same kind of a scenario. Um, I love it. The back, backs of the books are nice. And by the way, this book won, the first Penderwicks, won a ton of awards, including a New York, being a New York Times bestseller, a book list editor's choice, a school library journal best book of the year, a Kirkus Reviews best book, a child magazine best book of the year, a book list editor's choice. I don't know. Maybe I read some of those twice, <laughs> um, which is odd because I, I mean, certainly the idea of the series deserved the award. I thought this book was way better. I would have rather seen this book won the award, but either way, I still highly recommend it. And I will totally do a review of the second two books as soon as I get them. And I am looking forward to keeping these in my collection. I, think, I thought I heard a rumor there's going to be a fifth book still written, but I'm not sure. Uh, I would love to see this in a movie. Maybe they're making it into a movie. I haven't researched that. It would really make a good movie, I think, a movie series. So thanks for watching. If you've read The Penderwicks, definitely let me know what you think.